Um, as I said, you know, my name is Lily. I'm a wife, a mom, a sister, daughter, you know, cancer fighter. I hate the word cancer survivor um, because it did not get the best of me. And so I feel like every day I'm a cancer fighter. Um, I've been in tech for about 23 or 24 years. Gosh, I hate to even say maybe 25. I've been around. <laughs> um, I've been at companies like Yahoo, Apple, Palo Alto Networks, Rubrik. I feel like, you know, those are definite badges of honor, but also scars on me <laughs> um, as we kind of navigate career. You know, you're going to get some amazing experiences at, you know, employers, but also some that can be very, you know, emotionally draining and detrimental to even your health. Um, so I'll dig into that um, because today I'm here to discuss, you know, health. You know, do we truly prioritize health? Do you try to fit, fit it into your busy schedule? Sometimes the answer is no, right? We will skip a doctor's visit or ignore an ailment because we're too busy. I'm here to talk about wellness, right? What's changed since COVID-19? I think that a lot has changed. I think we've become even more tied to our, our desks and our you know, work from home life. Or if you even go in, I think a lot has changed with maybe getting sick in the past? And how are we addressing health issues that maybe are still lingering from COVID-19 if you were unlucky to, to get it? Also in career, how do we balance growth while remembering to address your health? And I think that one of my biggest mottos today is you can't shine, you can't grow unless you're healthy and you're here. And so um, let me escape here and, and come back to video. Were you all able to see my screen? I just want to make sure that that did work um, because I don't see you. <laughs> Great. And so, yes, um, you know, I think that a lot changed during, you know, COVID, even for myself. And I wasn't able to see, maybe I was able to see my oncologist because I am a breast cancer survivor. But I honestly kind of, you know, said, well, it's COVID. I don't want to go outside and you know, deal with putting on a mask or getting a test. And so I'll skip my oncologist visit. Um, and things like that kind of started to kind of layer on me and build and until my my doctor called me and said, where are you? We haven't talked. We're open. Come on in, <laughs> wear a mask, you know, get over it. And so I feel like during this big transition of being home, health really did start to deteriorate for me, especially just by being home and drinking every day, you know, that did pack on pounds, you know, lots of sugar in drinking. And, you know, you're thinking, oh, well, you know, I'm here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing to do. Work is really slow. And, you know, I'm going to have a white claw at three o'clock. I'm being really honest here. Like a lot of people started to see a growth in um, alcohol consumption in their own homes. Um, and so I think that just kind of looking back there again, it's going to be a retrospective. There are things that are tied to work and health again <laughs> and COVID that really did kind of take a toll. I'm gonna go back to my presentation and continue. All right, okay. And so I'm gonna quickly jump into my story. You know, like I said, <clears throat> 20, 20 plus years in, in tech led to 2015, right? I think I got into tech about 1999. Um, but, you know, fast forward to 2015, I had my first baby at age 35. And <clears throat> during the first 15 years of my career, you know, I, pri I prioritized that really heavily. And then, you know, I started a family and I obviously have been in tech for a really long time and I juggled, you know, really large initiatives at these companies that I displayed earlier and, you know, all while, you know, raising an infant and a toddler. And as a woman, I really felt like, you know, I got to make it happen. I've got to juggle it all. I can do it all. Women can have it all. I'm going to prove to myself and to the world that I can do this. Um, but in 2017, you know, my world came to a halt when I was diagnosed with at first, it was like, oh, you have, you know, a big lump in your breast. And then it got more serious as I had more biopsies. And so really at that point, I reached stage three cancer. And I have no idea 
in all the years of going to the doctor and you know trying to keep up on my physicals that it came about so quickly and it was really progressed to a really dangerous stage. Um, and then, you know, really what changed since then, right? From 2017 to now, I think a lot has changed. And especially in the way that I look at health and, and working in tech and how I address issues that, you know, quite frank, frankly, are bothering me with my health and how I juggle that with, with my employers. Um, some quick facts for you all here. Um, in 2023, you know, there'll be about almost 2 million new cases um, and 600,000 deaths, which, you know, until you see the numbers and the data, it's quite scary um, for, and this is just, you know, speaking about breast cancer, there's so many other, you know, uh, cancers out there that also take an, you know, immense toll on our society and on our world. It's not just like a United States, you know, problem. Um, daily, you know, that's 5,000 cases and 1,600 deaths that, you know, unfortunately happen and should not happen. Um, also, there are some, you know, disparities. Also, Black women are more likely to die from breast cancer than women of any other racial or ethnic group. And that's because when they do get, um, you know, diagnosed, they're triple negative, which really does, you know, it, it's interesting and it's it's worrisome because, you know, you then you start to think about, you know, health um, coverage for all and how are we addressing, you know, managing health within these ethnic groups. Same with, uh, again, breast cancer is a leading cause of, you know, cancer related death um, in the U.S. for Black and Hispanic women. And so, again, it's just a stark data point that makes you kind of stop and think, well, I'm young, you know, I'm, I'm in my 20s, I'm in my 30s, maybe I don't need to worry about it. But I think that it's good to see these numbers and really think about um, preventative, you know, care and really maybe think about, you know, maybe people in your life that you could support if they're going through this. And then lastly here, I thought it'd be a cool data point to add is that breast cancer in men is rare, but it does happen. They don't have breasts, but they have breast tissue. And so, you know, it counts for less than 1%, but it is a good data point to consider if you're a man on, on this um, <laughs> session. I didn't want to make you feel left out <laughs> from a data perspective. And then another here I'm going to share, you know, new cases. Here are the other areas that, you know, also, you know, infiltrate our society from a cancer standpoint. And again, if you start to look into it, you can go down a black hole, which I don't recommend, but it's good to kind of see, oh, okay, well, you know, um, let me consider these areas. And if I ever feel, you know, that I'm feeling like I may have a symptom or I'm worried, I'm going to address it. And I'm going to address it as soon as possible. Okay, let me come back to you on video. And take a look at your comments. Great, I'm glad you could see my screen. And so I'm going to not share a couple more slides because I do want you guys to see me. Um, but, you know, let's talk about, you know, the, the unknown cost of illness, right? And here, you know, like I said, you know, you may be, well, I'm fine, I'm healthy, I work out, I eat right, um, I can skip you know, um, a physical, I can skip talking to my doctor about this little thing that's worrying me. But once it gets too late, right, there are a lot of things that can really come into play here where it's just unforeseen costs, right? So if you wait too long to address a health issue, um, the cost of surgery, anesthesia, special medications, sometimes our health insurance does not cover it. Even if you have the best insurance, you may have to have an out of pocket and that gets very costly. Um, also, you know, the unknown side effects of post-treatment, right? If you go through treatment of any sort, it's not like you're you're cured, like they, let's say you have a surgery and it's not like you're cured the next day. You know, you still have to go through, um, you know, mental and psychological changes that, you know, you need to go through from the trauma of having, you know, a procedure done. Um, 
hormone imbalances, long-term side effects of medication and just physical changes. And so this is where I kind of want to talk about how we can balance or at least try to learn how to balance um, addressing, you know, these things with your employer, with your manager, with your parents, with your siblings, because the first thing that, you know, we would need to do is really just drop the guilt of this is going to drop at work or I'm going to fail or I'm going to be seen in a different light if I don't show up to this meeting because I'm at the doctor. And I feel like that was one of my biggest mistakes in dealing with my breast cancer. I really thought I could do it all. And I wanted to prove to the world that, you know, uh, Lily Maki was, you know, a superwoman and, and it really did take an immense toll on me. Um, so some of the lessons learned that I've done and I've thought about and I've written down is for some of you who are early career, um, some of the thoughts I had when I was early career is only people in senior you know, positions can say no. Only a senior level person can decline a, a meeting and say, no, I can't take on this right now. You know, I'm dealing with X or you don't even need to share. But has anyone, you know, on this on this um, session ever had that similar thought of, you know, I can't say anything to um, my leadership team or, you know, on my team because I'm not senior enough. And I have a really good question here as well is how do I muster up the courage to initiate the conversation about personal life? Right. Um, and and it's absolutely that you you have to. Yes, especially consider for promotions um, on my slide that I have in front of me. And I'd, I'd rather be looking at you when, <laughs> when I'm uh, talking about it is, you know, you really have to drop that guilt and that sense of, oh, I'm going to be judged, right? Because at the end of the day, a good employer is going to want what's best for you. And you're going to have to, at least I say, speak to HR, because my mistake before was just dealing with managers. And sometimes, you know, a manager may be more goal focused and wanting to execute things for the business. And I feel like talking to your HR business partner, um, or at least writing to them, right, can really kind of document uh, that evidence for you. Um, it's really important to do that and put things in writing so that if you ever feel like something unfair is happening with the way you're being led or your, your manager's style of responding to your um, requests for time off for mental what mental wellness or health, you, know, you have that in writing. Um, one of the things that I really regret, and I'll tell you right now, is when I had my my one of my second surgeries for my mastectomy and, and my breast cancer journey, I took a call like the next day. And I thought to myself, oh, you know, I'm going to make myself visible. I know I'm out for my second surgery, but, you know, I'm going to hop on a call and may not say anything, but they see me there. And I feel like, to be quite honest with you all, it counts for nothing, right? Th the show will move on. Um, if you have a good team, you know, the projects will continue. And as soon as you're able, you can hop back on and you can help drive things that may have slipped or that were your responsibility. But I think that in the end, if you're not well, like nothing else will be well. Um, I have a question here. I couldn't advocate party. Is the title? It's a title. Yes, um, exactly. A title is a title, right? But without you, without your talents and you know your experience and your ideas you know what good is what good is it um i feel like one example you know i helped uh build a big campus for a, a big company a couple of years ago while i was doing my radiation treatment and again hindsight's 2020 i kick myself for this every day as i look back and i was running around with um a bandage under my arm because I was having radiation done under my arm and it's like a burn like really when you have radiation treatment it's like literally lighting your skin on fire and my skin was black and gross and disgusting and here I was running around a huge campus with four buildings eight floors trying to get things done 
You know, I had a pushy manager on my back to get things done that didn't consider, you know, my illness. And at the end of the day, I look back and I see that building and it's like, it's standing, right? And all my blood, sweat and tears and pain, like, was it really worth it? And I'll be really honest with you all, it was not. And so, again, hindsight, and what I would do today is I treat my health as a number one priority, even if I have the most important job in technology, or, you know, I look back to uh, being a junior employee, and maybe not heading to the doctor when I should have. And that's what I want to share with you all here today is, you know, we're, we're we have different levels here of, of tenure on these calls, and we're all learning great things about leading in and being a part of, you know, the rise of Latinos and technology. But at the same time, you really should consider, you know, how you feel mentally, physically, address those things early on, and ask a lot of questions to your doctor. Do not, you can take their word, yes, but I feel like one of the things that I've done in, in my own experience, and I'd love to chat more about this because I know 30 minutes is not enough, is you need to question, right? You need to question data and you need to question a doctor's, uh, you know, diagnosis as well. I have a really interesting cancer story. I'd love to share a little bit more in depth. Um, I find me on LinkedIn. We can chat more. Uh, but really, you know, remember that if you don't stand up for your own you know, health, no one will. Like no one's going to stop you and say, hey, have you been to the doctor this year? Have you had your physical? You know, and I think that's why I'm here today. I'd love to, <laughs> to be that person, um, <laughs> that amiga that's going to tell you, hey, have you, you know, checked in with your doctor, checked in on your mental health, checked in on everything in order for you to continue to rise and grow. Um, and so I'm good. I, we've got 10 minutes. I'm, I'm open for, for questions and I can keep going. I have a little bit more on my, um, my deck. Um, but I'm going to stop now to see if I, there's any questions. Okay. Raquel's asking, how did you find the career that allow you to balance? Yeah. And I think, um, I didn't, I think my career found me. Um, I am, you know, I think that less than 3% of Latinas work in technology. And I, I think to be quite honest, I'm just really lucky to have been born, you know, in the Bay Area where I think those opportunities were extended a little bit more to, to all, to be quite honest. But I think that um, you have to allow yourself for the balance. And I see the question here, right? Like, um, you may have to advocate for yourself and fight for that balance where maybe you block, uh, you know, an extended lunch and you say, all right, once a month, you know, I'm going to take care of like a dentist appointment or I'm going to take care of, you know, an OB appointment or a physical. Um, and I think you need to kind of create that space uh, for yourself and do not feel guilty about it. One of my slides here that I have is, you know, you got to drop the guilt and, you know, close your computer, go to your appointment. And, you know, an employer really can't fault you for that, for, for going to, to see your medical provider. <laughs> um, these days, I feel like there's a lot more openness and support for employees. And, you know, I'm lucky enough to have a mental wellness program at my company that I absolutely use. Um, but if you don't see that in your companies, raise your hand. It's okay to be the first person to ask like, hey, like, you know, I, don't see a mental wellness problem uh, program here at my company or at our company. How do we start one? How do we investigate? You know, I'm throwing in the idea, um, HR team or, you know, benefits team. Um, don't be afraid to be that person to raise your hand and, and speak up because in most cases they will respond. And, and you know, I've heard some great stories about um, people being the first to say, hey, you know, I'd love a work from home day. I'm a mother. I breastfeed. Um, and then it became a program. So I think that that um, you need to create that balance is what I'm saying. And don't be afraid. Uh, you can you can make it happen. All right. Six more minutes. Also, one of the other things I wanted to kind of talk about here is, you know, what I learned in retrospect and what happened, you know, after my whole breast cancer journey. And I was like kind of sitting to myself one day and 
you know, I didn't work for about a year and I thought, you know, wow, I'm really at a low point. I have been through so much. I feel like it can con contribute so much. And I started to just write things down. And here are a couple of the things that I wrote down. I wrote, I'm empathetic. I'm confident. I'm committed. I'm humble. And I can weather any storm and endure chaos and ambiguity. I wrote these things out. But all of them translate into work, right? I'm committed at work. I'm confident at work. I'm empathetic at work. All of the things that I felt like, you know, define me as a person, translate right into work. So if you take the time to kind of write these things about yourself, right? And and even if you go through a health scare or, you know, where maybe you're not working for, you know, a certain amount of time, write these, these things down. Don't think about the negative. And I feel like a lot of the things that we're going to write about our character always translate into work. And then they could be resume bullet points that you can be proud of. Um, it doesn't have to be a tech skill or, you know, <laughs> experience or tenure or somewhere. You can write these things down that do translate into the type of employee you are. Um, and so that's one of the things that kind of got me out of a rut and, you know, really motivated me to get back into the workforce. Because after this huge, you know, cancer scare, I felt like, well, is that it for me? Um, and so after writing some things down and having a hard discussion with myself, I'm like, nope, this isn't it for me. I can do more. I see your comments here. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, Richard. Yeah, crisis management during COVID was, you know, I feel like during during COVID, companies really did turn their eyes to their employees, right? Because they didn't know when we were going to get sick because some people were super careful and maybe some people had to be out around other people. And it was like, wow, how do we accommodate people's health now? And I think that that was a great eye opener for employee employers to consider health even more now for the employees. So I'm really hoping that your companies um, have programs that are going to support you through, through illness even more so. Four more minutes here. Now I wish I could hear you, your voices, because it would be great to have a two-way conversation. Um, any other questions, comments? Hi. Hi. Hi, Lily. Oh my gosh. Um, no, I um I do have I do have one other question um for you uh, on this on this incredible topic. And thank you for sharing your story because yeah, absolutely. it's really beautiful. You know what I mean? Like it's it's critical conversations that we just always sweep under the rug so it's like my biggest question that i just have for you is that you know you you know you said that like it, this it was such a struggle for you to like um like open up like how you're feeling um your, your mental well-being and like what and in, and in, in your breast cancer and, and what you were going through at work um and everything is so like would you say that for you that after having that spark to be able to advocate for your mental well-being, that that has become uh, a value that you would always want to look for um, in in like um, on your career journey, or is that like something um, that you always try to implement um, even even in your current role, right? Because like we get so caught up with like the, a project that we don't that we can easily forget to ask how is the other person is doing. You know, like it's all about, OK, get to work, do the task, do the work and we just got to produce. So how have you also kind of had that in conversations with your team Absolutely. At, a, at such a higher position? That is such a great question, because I I've been a little mad at myself in my in my in my past because I felt like why did I behave like the mother hen to my team when they didn't, you know, they didn't care about me. And I was always worried about, Hey, did you guys, you know, eat lunch yet? Let's all go eat lunch together. Or, you know, just I've always been that really caring or maybe overly caring person, <laughs> coworker. And then sometimes I'm like, you just stop that. Like they can get their right. own lunch. But speaking of health, right. And how I deal with, yeah. with my, my teams, you know, um, I have a really open, candid relationship with my teams and I let them know that they need to put health and family first. I don't mm. care what happens. And I let them know when I interview or when they get the job, 
or when we have our team meetings, it's like if whatever is going on in your life, right? Uh, work can wait, not forever, but we can wait right. while you address those things because you're not your best when you're juggling it all. Because mm. I know that when you juggle it all, it, and one area is going to suffer, right? Whether it's going to be you, which yeah. usually it is, or the project, which yes, matters at the time. But like I said, looking back and I drive by that building, I didn't really need to be there. It would have mm. happened. <laughs> right. You know, right. Yeah. It's like, exactly. It's like, you think of like, what did, was I really needed? Like, <laughs> yes. But <laughs> wait, who needed me was me. Right. Yeah, in my house. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Great question. Um, I am on LinkedIn. For those of you who want to continue the conversation, I think my time is up. Thank you so much. I would have loved to share for a little bit longer, but I appreciate everyone joining and, you know, Viva los Latinos, viva todos. <laughs> Keep shining, everyone. And thank you so much again. Yes. All right. Bye, everyone.